Let's study the presidency of George H. W. Bush. In 1988, Bush found himself in a good position. Bush was nominated by the Republicans to continue on the policies and the popularity of Ronald Reagan. And so he was put against Democratic challenger Michael Dukakis. Interesting note for Michael Dukakis. Dukakis beat out Jesse Jackson, the first major African-American candidate for the nomination for the Democrats in this particular election. In 88, Bush won with 54% of the popular vote and 426 electoral votes. However, Bush had a Congress that was controlled by the opposition. The Democrats will give him trouble as he tries to pass legislation through Congress. The defense industry was hit hard by the end of the Cold War. Many factories were having to shut down. The economy was slowing and was developing into a recession with many people being laid off and factories closing. Bush had made some gigantic promises to the American people, in particular, to improve the economy. He called for tax cuts, especially in the capital gains tax, or taxes paid by businesses, investors when they sell stocks or real estate for a profit. Bush's biggest promise to the American people was this. Raise taxes and I'll say no, and they'll push and I'll say no, and they'll push again and I'll say to them, Read my lips. No new taxes. The problem with it is, again, the Democrats controlling Congress. The tax cuts that he was promoting were all voted down in Congress. So, in exchange, Bush agreed to a tax increase in exchange for cuts in spending. This broke his campaign promise of no new taxes and turned many, many voters against him. He did do some successful things. Let me give you a few examples. For example, the Persian Gulf War, I believe was a, a success of the United States. I believe it was a good moment for Bush. The Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, forbids discrimination in work in public places against people who are physically and or mentally challenged as well. Bush called as for America to be more a kinder and gentler America. Um, on a global um, on a global level, and that gave some people the kind of the wrong idea of America that maybe he wasn't as hard nosed, as strong as his predecessor, Ronald Reagan himself. Um, Bush does go on to appoint African American to the Supreme Court. His second one, that is Clarence Thomas. He replaced Thurgood Marshall of uh, Brown v. Board fame, and he would identify with the cons as being a conservative. Um, on the Supreme Court level as well. However, four years later in 1992, Bush is going to be hurt again by the whole idea of tax increases. He said there wouldn't be any more taxes. The challenger is a younger candidate, Governor Bill Clinton of Arkansas, promising to cut taxes and blaming Bush for the, the post-Cold uh, War recession. Just as a side note, the independents ran a, a millionaire from Texas named H. Ross Perot. Um, he would get on TV with his little infomercials and he'd have charts with him and he would explain economics. But he was a good candidate in the sense that he organized many people at the grassroots level, local, local people deciding to come together and vote for a, a third party candidate in particular. So Clinton will win with only 43 percent of the popular vote in the 1992 election, um, but 370 electoral votes. One more note about Perot, won nearly 20% of the popular vote. That's the best third party showing since the 1912 election when Teddy Roosevelt was running for the Bull Moose Party. So Bush is only a one-term president as Americans begin to look for a leadership change as they vote a Democrat into office, and that will be Bill Clinton. Hope that that was a little bit helpful. Please let me know if you still have some questions.